Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to another Lost Ark video. Sorry in advance for whatever I sound like today. I have been struggling with allergies lately, and it's been pretty bad. But we um we continue on, man. We try our best here, and by we I mean me, and I try my best here. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna look at the summer heat release notes. I'm also gonna take a look at this advanced honing UX expectations uh, thread. And what else we got on the past week? Oh yeah, I guess I should say it's Topical Tuesday. We take a look at the top posts over the last week on the subreddit. It is what it is. We see what's been happening. Uh, I think that's probably going to be about it, honestly. I guess we can take a look at this one too. Maybe this one if we have extra time. Anyways, Summer Heat Release Notes, Amazon Games Official Thread. Let's take a look here at the patch notes, see if there's anything neato here. Downtime begins at June 19th at 2 a.m. Pacific. Okay, they just pick a random time between midnight and like 3 a.m. now. It's so weird to me. Because before it used to always be midnight, and now it's just random. And I don't understand why. Uh, arriving with South Karzan is the first Kazaros raid, an all-new set of raids that players will have to conquer in order to someday face Kazaros himself. Picture of Echidna, very cool, very swag, very, very cool, very swag. Uh, it's an eight-player raid with two gates featuring new enemies and mechanics. Main enemy is Echidna. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's basically just Vicus 2. Uh, normal mode is 1620, hard mode is 1630, the raid introduces a new mechanic, allied force skills, it's basically just Sidereals still, but the lore reason as to why they're not Sidereals is lore reasons, it is what it is, um, and it includes the new progression system, advanced honing, related updates include guide quest, crimson red floral scent of temptation, I'm guessing that's the quest to fight her, or some shit, 21 new achievements, titles, trophies, mounts, codex information, echidna emote, pack, new cards, new book sets for the cards. We get some very cool screenshots of her. Very hot lady. Very wowzers. Amazing. Very cool. Uh, allied force skills. Major NPCs, including some Sidereals, can be summoned to aid players in combat. Players can get various assists from their allies, such as powerful damage, aggro control, and more. Allied Forces skill meter can be filled by meeting certain con certain conditions throughout the course of battle. Allied Force skill meter can be filled up to five slots of their gauge. Players can use one of the Allied Force skills when the meter fills more than three slots. Only certain skills can be used after meeting specific requirements. Only raid group leader can use the skills. Allied NPCs use a powerful force skill when summoned. The player enters an additional command while the summoned ally is in combat. The summoned allied NPC will use their support skill. Advanced honing. So this is the meat and potatoes of the update for most people. The raid and the honing. Uh, this is what the UI is going to look like in our version, and all translated and everything. Basically, it's just honing 2.0, except instead of you having, like, a percent chance of passing, you just have to fill up this bar all the way, and then once the bar is filled up, the piece levels up, right? And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure... Pretty sure... Pretty sure it's probably going to be worth doing this in T3 um, on your main. The reason I say this is because you have basically no usage of T3 mats right now since you're not going to be raw honing anymore. And advanced honing carries over to T4, right? And T4 mats, while we don't know the scaling on T4 mats for advanced honing... It stands to reason that the scarcity of T4 mats at the beginning will make T4 mats much more valuable than T3 mats are currently. Especially since if you're already 1620 on uh, like your main, you're not going to be ever regular honing it until T4. So I think it makes sense to my peanut brain to utilize advanced honing to its full potential right now. Because... What else are you going to do? Because, like I said, advanced honing carries over and T3 mats are already basically... There's nothing else to do with them, essentially. 
if you're already 1620. But anyway, uh, you're able to get up to 20 item levels from doing both 1 through 10 and then 11 through 20 levels of advanced toning. So you get a technically up to 20 item levels from this, which is pretty big. Pretty big. Uh, it'll take a good amount of weeks to do it. I think uh, Saints Post that we're going to read after this has exactly how many weeks it'll take. But for now, let's keep reading this. Uh, advanced toning is a new progression where gear can be upgraded in item level in an all-new way from materials earned in the Echidna Raid. To proceed with advanced toning, the gear must go through tempering first. Sidereal weapons along with ancient, upper ancient gear with item level 1620 and above can be tempered with Agris' scale, obtained in normal, or Alcone's eye, obtained in hard mode. Elkauni. Uh, by using either of the two materials to temper gear, players can activate advanced honing levels 1 through 10. Players can retemper the gear that reached to level 10 without Elkone's eye, obtainable in hard mode, which will open levels 11 through 20 of advanced honing. To reach advanced honing level 20, a single gear must be tempered twice. Advanced honing tempered gear will increase advanced honing XP. The amount of XP increased per advanced honing try is set, but great successes can occur by chance and increase more XP. Finally, when players try advanced honing, Ancestor's Grace Orbs are filled. When six orbs are full, the next advanced honing attempt will summon the powers of Great Umar Ancestors. When Ancestor's Grace is in effect, a few useful effects will be bestowed, some of which include... Advanced toning XP increased by five times. Advanced toning increased <clears throat> by three times. Advanced toning increased by 30. And in recharges in Sister's Grace. Advanced toning increased by 10. And then materials and honing costs for the next advanced toning is free. Excluding optional materials. So basically, I think it's every seven hones you get Ancestor's Grace. And then you get one of these effects. Uh, it seems like to me... The Anvil or Galater's Hammer are by far just the better of the four. Um, but any of them are good. It's just little extra bonuses as you hone to make it less annoying and less shitty, which is always good. Uh, and then you got the new continent, South Curzon, with the arrival of Red Moon, strange events have been coming, uh, be gun occurring across Arcasia. Damn, my fucking nose is killing me, man. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm trying here. A mysterious pungent red liquid is corrupting the Sea of Jinnah, Jinnah, and people fear that it could be an omen to the return of the demon lord Kazaros. Okay, I'm not going to read this RP shit. But 1580 is the item level to do Kurzan uh, and do all the quests there. The quests are needed for Echidna, and Echidna is going to be released immediately, so you have to do the quest. Uh, shift G through that bitch. Word on the street is it takes like an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. Uh, some pictures of Kurzdan, very cool. Very poggers, very champ. It just looks like Kalaja. Kalaja, TBH. Uh, and then, of course, everybody's favorite, the Chaos Assault event. Uh, part 2 is common, Return of the Dragon, yippee! Chaos Assault will continue with new activities in Part 2, titled Return of the Dragon. Uh, talk to researcher Marcus at Mount Zagoras to learn about the giant shadow appearing in the Fortress of Chaos. Players can enter the Fortress of Chaos through a portal on Mount Zagoras. During the event period, defeat Kai's Hooter to receive various rewards. Just like part one, the difficulty of the field varies depending on the player's character item level, but the same rewards are distributed regardless of the item level. Players can obtain Chaos Crystal by participating in the event, which can be exchanged at the event shop for various rewards. The event shop has had a new tab added. Uh, summer celebratory gift will be sent out with this release. Cool. Let's take a look at that in the team update. Uh, new monthly login event with Fever Time has been added. Very cool. Store update Kimono and Spring Dream weapon set. So the Kimono skins are back. Uh, and then this is the Arc Pass skin. It's going to blow your ears out for a second. I'm sorry in advance. There's some latex bondage gear looking shit. Very cool. I'm sure this will get a lot of people juiced up if you know what I'm saying. Uh, for me, I'm good with what I have. This does not strike joy. Raptor looks kind of cool, though. And then rabbits. Fucking rabbits, man. Pretty cool wallpaper as well. 
Uh, but that's it for the skins. The emotes that won the design contest that just happened recently are being added to the game, which I think is pretty big. These are the five that we're getting. Um, they're not bad. I fuck with them. New uh, competitive proving realm shit is happening. So if you're one of the few people that play PvP, there you go. End date has not been determined. MVP background system. Cool. Cackle Sidon will no longer drop Sidereal Energy to balance the total in-game earnable amount of Sidereal Energies. Yeah, because I think too many people were getting them from Clown. I think that's a really good change. Gotta make sure you remove uh, everything. Just in case. Uh, but the bots! Yeah, okay, dude. Balance things around bots, the game isn't playable, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we also got the balance patch. So basically just a bunch of buffs to classes, basically. Little buffs here and there. Nothing too a major, but buffs nonetheless. If you want to take a look at your class, pause the video when I'm scrolling. But it's just like small buffs, really. That's all it is. Uh, and then what... So this is the summer celebration gift that we're getting. Which will be nice. Another legendary elixir chest. I fuck with that. My soul eater is going to have so many chests to finally open and cut. Hopefully she just gets a 40 set immediately. Overall good patch. Looks good with the images. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Good patch notes. Only thing I dislike is not having one week to run the story before the raid. Yeah. I don't understand why they're releasing both at the same time. It is what it is, though. Um, and then here, this is from Saint, this post, Saint Tony, Saint One, Saint Tone. Uh, he even says the same thing that I was kind of thinking, I guess. Um, advanced toning is not a waste of resources, despite T4 coming in a few months. It's considered a separate system. Provides the same benefits as honing, so what you gain from it will carry over. Advanced toning does not replace regular honing. It can serve as a replacement for the time. Uh, should you want to get from 1620 to 1630. So what he means basically is you're not going to regular hone right now because it's like pointless basically once you're 1620 already. But advanced honing <clears throat> will allow you to get to 1630 if that's something you want to do before T4 drops. And it like makes sense to do it because again T3 mats are kind of in this weird spot right now where if you're 1620 or above it serves very little purpose to use the regular honing system. And obviously, if you're below 1620, then obviously you're honing to get to 1620. Because you need to be 1620 in order to, you know, do the thing. Uh, and by do the thing, I mean progress to T4. Existing Akan Ancient Gear must be plus 19. So it has to be 1620 in the gear piece itself. I still have three gear pieces that are not 1620. So that'll be a problem, but that's a problem for later. Uh, if you're starting for 1620 and normal echidna, it takes about 10 weeks to obtain all the time gated raid mats to temper your gear. Cool. So it's about 10 weeks. Um, and then you can kind of see here some like math stuff. Uh, and then does advanced toning always save you gold? It's not always cheaper depending on where you are, but it's probably always worthwhile compared to regular honing in T3. You're already 1630 going into the system it'll always be cheaper but if you're starting from 1620 it's a little ambiguous once you reach 11 to 20. from 1620 to 1630 advanced stages 110 is always cheaper however if you make it to 1630 from 10 levels of advanced honing it's technically cheaper by a small amount of regular hone plus 20 and plenty one plus 20 and plus 21 than to do stages 11 through 20 the cost difference is very small and people may be willing to spend a little more just to not have to deal with potentially bad rng there you go uh, and then, especially because advanced honing likely preserves better going into T4 than over honing past plus 19. What happens to advanced honing in T4? It just carries over. And there's that. The irony of solo raids. Uh, at launch, we used to have 10 plus players playing together. Most of them quit for Argus. Last four quit just before Clown got released. But with the news of solo raids, at least five of us will give Lost Ark another go. Unlikely, but if this keeps up, we might even be able to get eight people for a full raid, which is 100% ironic. The addition of solo raids might revive our raid group. I simply hope the solo version will not suck too badly. Me too, man. Um, I don't know why this game is so 
against making things for people to do by themselves as like a viable option just in general. But if you look at any other MMO ever to exist, the amount of solo content in these games are basically the entirety of Lost Ark's content to begin with. Like, there's so much solo shit you can do. And Lost Ark just has none of it. So, I hope that solo raids won't suck ass and there's, like, an actual, like, 75% gold reward or something. But I fully expect them to give, like, 25% gold and tell you to be happy with it. That's me being pessimistic, though. I love Lost Ark for the combat. Now I can play it without the parts that I don't like. This is it. Let people play the game, man. It's not always about parsing. It's not always about doing the cutting edge content. It's not always about pushing your gear score to the highest level. It's just about let people play the fucking game, man. And I know it's like hard for some people to understand that people can enjoy playing the game in different ways than yourself. But not everybody cares about pushing the highest level of content and pushing item level and shit. Some people just want to play the game. And that's why solo content in MMOs is important for these kind of people. And I mean shit, even people who push this kind of content sometimes need a break and don't want to do this shit. Solo content is just a net win for everybody. What that solo content is, I don't... I, I have no real air in the matter but just games need solo content yes it's an mmo but come on come on uh elixirs need a rework not a cost to nerf i mean yeah as long as elixirs exist in this state and are required new and returning players will continue to decline they need to add more attempts per elixir and make the process faster with less rng the system is just as oppressive as ever and none of the other good changes will matter until they are fixed I mean, I do think it's obvious that elixirs need to be changed. Um, I'm just hoping that this is a band-aid fix to 50% cost reduction and that they'll actually fix them later, but who knows? We'll have to wait and see. You know what I'm saying, smile face? All RNG systems need you to fall forward like transcendence or honing. Yeah, I mean, I agree. It still doesn't feel great to get massively unlucky with either of these systems, but at the very least, at least you are always going forward. With elixirs, you could just cut a billion and theoretically never see, like, a critical or something. And that's not good. <clears throat> Anyways, I think I've yapped enough. And also, my allergies are, like, shutting my face entirely to make it impossible for me to speak. So, I think that's about it for me today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out, as always. And thank you for dealing with my nasally voice. My more nasally than normal voice. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Thank you, guys. Bye.